the years, we've seen lots more of this purposeful arrangement of parts. Here's a nice example. Here's a bug called a plant hopper. And improvements in uh, video techniques have shown that it can leap further than other insects because of an arrangement down on its legs. And if you look at these little bumps, they, people couldn't see what they were. Mm -hmm. But in recent years, they were shown to be gears, literally mechanical gears. And, and most people, when they see this, realize the purpose behind it. So, and I'll skip over this. This is bacteriophage T4. It's just another example of it. Okay, let me um, skip over to the book. And here's the cover of the book. Just came out a month or so ago. And here are the three key concepts from the book. The first rule of adaptive evolution, the principle of comparative difficulty, and the family line. Mm -hmm. I think I'll just talk about the first one just because of time issues here. The first rule of adaptive evolution. And a, lo a lot of it is based on uh, the work of this man, Richard Lemsky, mm -hmm. who is a professor, professor at Michigan State. And he has run an experiment for 30 years in which he has grown at the bacterium E. coli in flasks in his laboratory. And since, uh, since um, E. coli bacteria are so small, they reproduce quickly in about just one hour is a generation. And since they're so small, you can grow a lot of them in a small space. You can get hundreds of millions of them in, in a uh, test tube. Well, uh, he saw throughout, throughout his experiment that every now and again, a mutant bacteria would come along that could grow faster than everything else. But when he started the experiment in the 1990s, there wasn't the technology to track down the change in the DNA to see what it was that was helping them grow faster. <laughs> and uh, when he tracked down the first one, he saw that it was a mutation in something called the ribose operon. And the ribose operon, uh, the activity of it decreased. And it turns out that much of it was deleted, in other words, broken, was thrown out, and nonetheless, this was a beneficial mutation. So this makes the point that beneficial mutations don't have to be constructive, they can be uh, degradative. And sort of like, Mike, Dr. Michael, I'm sorry to interrupt, I think, yeah. correct me if I'm wrong, uh, uh, related to the, the argument that it's usually uh, like used by some of the Darwinists, that if people deny Darwinism is true, then they are denying the antibiotics that they work. Yeah. And I think it's the same mechanism that uh, the, the uh -huh. virus or the bacteria or something like that, they actually destroy it. Some part of the genes are destroyed. We'd like that's, to touch upon this point. Yeah, that, that's ex exactly right. 